Hi, everybody. You know, a pretty nice day overall. And uh, let me begin with the fact it's pretty comfortable, right? Temperatures are in the 70s outside. Got to like that. You know, looking at my live camera network, Cathedral Ridge, a lot of sunshine out in Hood River. Depot Bay is clear, by the way, from the, the Channel House camera. Uh, Lewis River, broken cumulus clouds, Camas Meadows, a little darkness here and there. But, um, you know, pretty nice, generally speaking, except for still very hazy Aspen Lakes uh, Golf Course over in Sisters. Uh, you can see that Sun River, not as bad. Uh, I do want to show you the fact that uh, we actually actually have some rain close by. How about that? It's 442 on this Tuesday. So on the left, you can see uh, rain up around Olympia, some Tralia. There have been some just kind of brief specks of rain on the radar around Astoria and the Kelso Longview area. You've got the, the big area of rain here setting offshore. That's with an upper level low that I was surprised we had early sun. And then we've seen the cumulus clouds build due to the instability this afternoon of that low. And then out east, all of this is what's left of that moisture flow from what was a hurricane, then a tropical storm into California, and now just some, some rain belts that are continuing from that storm. Of course, any rain much needed. It would have been great to see more of a widespread shield of rain move up into our area, but, but we simply didn't get that. Here you can see that low offshore. This is not the hurricane. This is just a typical upper level low, the remnants of a hurricane, I should say. This is just an upper level low spinning offshore. You can see it on the uh, satellite picture right here. So this low is going to stay to our north and then move across the area tonight into tomorrow morning. On the back side of that, I think we'll have a marine push tomorrow morning. Then as the low moves off, we'll get into a lot of sunshine during the day tomorrow. And then starting on Thursday, and the seven day I'll show you in a moment, but starting on Thursday, it still looks like we're going to be warming up and getting up to uh, the, the 90s. And by the way, right in here on the right, those X's, that's the lightning detection today out across far eastern Oregon. Again, this is the imagery page from my weather site, uh, portlandweather.com. Okay. Want to get into uh, some of the weather maps that I use. This is uh, the European 500 millibar model. This is was this morning. Let me just move it to uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, or 5 o'clock, pardon me. Decent low, 564 low. It's moving across uh, the Olympics uh, and through the San Juans. And then by the time we get to tomorrow morning, here we are. See, it's to the north of us now. It's a northwest flow pattern that comes in on the back side. That's the marine flow tomorrow morning. But moisture chances across our, our states will end uh, over the next 24 hours as that low moves off and the remnants of what was Hillary completely fade away out in eastern Oregon. This is where the heat is now, 597 high over Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. So thank goodness for us that that's moved off to the east for the time being. Now, let me go ahead and play this upper level map. I've got pretty comfortable weather tomorrow with the morning clouds, but then we get into Thursday. This is Thursday at 5 p.m. Notice the upper level high, 594 high, still across Oklahoma and up into Missouri. There's a new low right here, but it's offshore enough that we get a southerly wind flow. And that's going to allow temperatures with sunshine expected to hit 90 on Thursday. And then that could be day one of three or four 90 degree days through the weekend. Now we will be watching this upper level low and the proximity to it, uh, um, whether or not we're gonna have some rain. Some of the modeling gives us at least a chance of a shower on Friday, this is Friday morning, with maybe a thunderstorm in the southerly flow pattern. But the heights overall, 579 contour height for us, is really indicating there's a better chance that we'll stay dry. Uh, remember, one of the forecast rules is you get a 576 line on your contour at 8,000 feet, and that tends to be the, the dry line. If you're lower than 576, you have a better chance of rain. If you're 576 or higher, the rain chance starts to, to uh, decrease. Now, you can get instability in these southerly flows spinning up. So for now, there's at least a chance of a shower on Friday. It looks to me like Saturday, and here we are, the low backs off just a bit. Saturday, we could be 95 degrees. That's the warmest day I have on the seven day. The, the real hot weather is still out in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. Here is Sunday. Now the low was actually strengthened and it's getting closer. And by the time we get into Tuesday morning, now we've got clouds building. Now we're underneath, we're lower than 576 millibars. That's 573, 575 millibars. Moisture being spun up. Chance of showers and thunderstorms Tuesday. The low comes in Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. 
if this holds true, that is likely we'll get some precipitation. The modeling's not putting out much, but likely that we would get some Tuesday night into the day on Wednesday. And with that, on Wednesday, see a mainly cloudy day, uh, at least morning and early afternoon with temperatures that would probably be in the 70s. This is Wednesday. The, the blue colors kind of help you find that cold trough that's moving through. And then once that exits through, then we'll start warming up on that Thursday and Friday and into that weekend. Notice how this 591 low is starting to drift back to the east. So we'll keep an eye on that the back half of, of next week. Uh, let's see here. There's a couple more things I wanted to point out. One of them was this. So remember, we had the thunderstorms out east today. This is the National Weather Service. Anything shaded in greens, basically in their convective outlook and the chance for some convection, meaning thunder and lightning. So this correctly shows Eastern Oregon under the gun this afternoon. We just saw that being the case. Now, by the time we go into tomorrow, notice the chance pretty much exits our state. Just a little cliff out near Ontario in the northeastern section of our state. And then by the time we go to day three, now we're into uh, getting into Thursday morning, we're sunny and any chance of thunderstorms has totally moved off. Okay, air quality has been a big concern the last handful of days because of all that wildfire smoke. It was interesting that yesterday, remember yesterday we started off cloudy, we're actually smoking, and then west wind started to kick in. And then as we went through the day, the smoke cleared out. And if you look to the west, Yesterday afternoon, you saw clear skies and we woke up with basically no or very limited smoke this morning and the air quality this afternoon at 448 demonstrates that all the green dots in Oregon are good, good air quality out through the gorge. Still, the red is on healthy air. We saw that uh, Aspen Lakes golf course camera in the sisters area. And there's Prineville on healthy air. So that's still a problem, but should be improving in the next couple of days. Uh, I realize this is only the Oregon DEQ. It doesn't show Washington, but for Southwest Washington, the air quality uh, is all good. And here is the reason for the smoke. This is the Northwest Coordination Fire Center map. And what this shows you, it's a cluster of fires north of Seattle. It was these fires to our north that brought in that bad smoke that started back over the weekend and then set on top of us Monday to Tuesday morning. Fires are still burning out towards Spokane, the Great Oregon Road Fire. The Bedrock Fire is showing, what's that burn? 30,000 acres. That does have some containment now, but that's been burning down there and putting smoke into Central Oregon for, for quite some time. Let me click on the Lookout Fire. And let's see what this is showing. The Lookout Fire is now over 12,000 acres. It was lightning caused back on August 5th, 5% contained, smaller than the Bedrock Fire, but obviously still a, a bit of a player. And with all of that said, um, let me get you the seven day forecast. So we talked about morning clouds coming in tomorrow morning, clouds to sun, assuming we get the sun soon enough in the day on Wednesday, I like our chances of getting up to 80 degrees. And then Thursday, sunny skies, a bit of an east wind that should get us up to 90 or better. Some of the modeling on Thursday is actually going more like 94. So we'll see. Remember that low gets closer to us on Friday. There's that chance of a shower or a thunderstorm. Assuming we get enough sun and any rain that would develop holds off until later in the day, we could still hit 90 to 92. And remember I talked about the pressure heights. So Friday's in that kind of 20% chance category. I think it's more likely we stay dry, but there's certainly a chance. And then after that, Saturday's the warmest day of the week, 95. Sunday, still dry. Monday, cooling down. And then Tuesday, developing shower chances that leads into the likely rain Tuesday night, Wednesday of next week, with temperatures dropping down to the 70s. And that's what I have um, for us right now. I do expect, as the wind pattern gets light and goes more north to east, that going into the weekend, we'll sadly see an increase in that wildfire smoke back here on the western part of the state. So that's something else we'll be watching. For now, that's your update. Good to be back from vacation. I'll talk to you soon.